Hey guys, Russ here with bishopswest.com. Uh, first of all, sorry for not posting for a while. Things have been a little bit hectic, and I know that's just an excuse, but um, had something with the newest beta of Bitwig that just came out that I um, kind of wanted to show you. So I've kind of stayed away from talking about the grid very much just because I'm not the right guy to talk about it. There are lots of videos out there um, explaining the grid and how to set it up and how to use it and everything. But I've gradually become more familiar with it. And something that I was trying to do actually just probably a couple days ago, three or four days ago, wasn't able to do, but this newest update has made it possible. So I thought it was cool and I kind of wanted to show you. Um, like I said before, this is this channel is about stuff that I just think is cool and so I wanted to share it with you. So I've got the polygrid up here. Um, first thing, if you've never used the polygrid or even seen it, just click on this window and it pops up here. So what we've got are three things. We've got the output, and this is what sends the signal back into Bitwig out of the grid. We've got this envelope, which I'll talk about a little bit, and then we've got the oscillator. So oscillators, we've got a few up here, including a sample is kind of cool because that gives you access to a lot more than just these basic ones. But even with the basic ones, if I just press a key, that's what you get. That's a triangle sound. Um, all the oscillators have kind of the skew and fold to them. I apologize if that's loud. It's always loud. <laughs> um, so right click and you can choose something else. Double click to send it back to the default. The other thing is that they're all set up when you add them with the trigger and um, set to key tracking. So, right, follows your keyboard. Um, how in depth should I go? I don't think I want to go too in depth on everything here, but if you want to change the octave. And I'm not going to talk about how all that works and everything. You can also do it by semitones or by hertz. Um, and you can do stereo, stereo difference using the plus minus. If you want to. OK. Um, the envelope, this is just your basic attack release. So turn up the attack to make it slow, turn it back down to make it fast. And your release, same thing. Um, so what I was talking about that is new in this version is if I go to envelopes and just choose my AD, and you just saw two ways to switch out a, a, a module here. You can either right click and choose what you want or just go up here and, and just drag it on top of it. So anyways, what's new about this specific envelope is it's got a looping thing down here. And what this does is if I hold down a key, once it gets to the top and to the bottom, then it goes and starts over again as long as you're holding down the key. which then makes it possible to not rely on the keyboard press. And so that's what I was trying to do is create um, a patch that is um, self-generating. In other words, I don't have to press a key or do anything. It just keeps going on its own. So first thing, right now I've still got it so that it triggers with the device's incoming notes. So let's do something about that. I'm going to go to math and take a constant and take that. And now it's just running on itself. Uh, the other thing I'll do real fast 
is put an attenuator in there because sometimes patches do get loud. Um, so now it's running at a constant rate. I can either turn that all the way to zero, or if you click on this and press Alt-A, that disables the output. The same thing for any module, you can Alt-A and it'll disable that module. Um, okay, so now I'm gonna do something here. I'm going to go to random and find the dice. And I'm going to get three of these. So control C, control V, control V. I'm going to go to modulator, modulator out. Um, by the way, when you drag it in, just hold it over that output dot and it'll connect automatically. So control C, control V, control V. Just drag it over like that. And I'm going to use these to control three things. First one is going to be attack. Second one is going to be decay. And the third one will take a little more work, but it's going to control the pitch. So let's start with decay. I'm going to take this right down to almost, almost nothing. Then I'm going to use this. Uh, probably not got go too far for right now. And this I'm going to oops, start with decay pretty low, and then modulate it to go kind of high. Okay, so you'll see right now it's not doing anything. The reason is that there's nothing triggering it here to do anything. So what I need to do is figure out when it gets to the end of this cycle and starts over again, then I want to trigger this to choose a new value, random value, that will then send it to the attack or send it to the decay. So how do I do that? I mean, if I run it here, I think, I think for our purposes that works fine. So I'm just going to do that. So now you see it's randomizing all this stuff. It might be... You know what, it's fine. Okay, so next thing we have to do is pitch. So let's see what we got for pitch over here. We've got this, we've got transpose, um, pinch quantize, semitone. So let's start with pitch. Okay, I'm going to take this in here. Take that all the way up. And I'm going to take this down to C1 to start with. And then the fun part is I'm going to take this and take that how far do I want to take it? Let's do 48. And if you don't get it right, you can always control click over here and type 48. Okay. Um, the other thing with modular that I've heard from somebody else actually is it always sounds better if you put some reverb on it so my go-to has always been not always but since i got it this wrong just because it's kind of creative and fun and even just the initial patch is fine just to give it some character Just like that, you've got something kind of fun. Um, let's go to our envelopes. Let's put, well, first of all, filter. Um, they've got this new XP filter. I haven't played with it at all. That's my next project. 
So I've got my filter, I want an envelope that's just a basic attack delay. Same thing, trigger it. It's interesting how, I mean, obviously, because just with the frequency, it's affecting the higher notes a lot more um, than it would the lower notes, of course. But it's more of a blip and a bloop at the top than it is at the bottom. So that's really all I wanted to show you today was especially this. Um, lets you toggle that it just loops on its own and then this just creates another trigger to trigger the random values or to trigger the next thing in the in the in the chain um now i'm just going to play for a little bit i hope that's okay Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Things for you guys who are still new to the grid. Uh, oscillator is fun to have in there, but if I click on this on this module, you can also see um, what's coming in and what, what's going out. So you can kind of see the signal there. But it's fun sometimes just to see it in a bigger format in the oscillator, oscillator up here or in the oscilloscope. Um, the sign is just doing the phase modulation here. This controls how much. Um, the dice, the random function, I just wanted to have that re trigger at the same time as all the other stuff. And transpose, you can transpose by semitones or fractions of semitones. Um, you can kind of do the same thing with pitch, but this keeps it kind of on your standard pitch and then I'm using the transpose for that kind of vibrato or tremolo effect. Um, just depending on how much the LFO is getting hit with the randomness. So, okay. I know it's just kind of throwing a lot at you, but hopefully it was just interesting to you and maybe even useful. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Please feel free to share or to like this video, and I'll talk to you guys next time. Thanks for watching.